okay, everybody. This is 4.6. Um, we had a little break from all, all of our triangle congruencies, and I'll give you a little um, little reminder what those were. We started with side, side, side. We then added side, angle, side. We did angle, side, angle. And then we did angle, angle, side. Uh, we used all those to then be able to uh, prove that triangles are congruent and then be able to tr tr prove that parts of uh, triangles that are congruent are going to be, parts are going to be congruent to each other, okay? So this is adding a, a, an extra triangle congruency, and so we're going to call this hypotenuse leg, and, uh, you know, if you understand the terminology, the verbiage that we're using, the vocabulary, hypotenuse is just, you know, it's, it's, relevant only to right triangles. So this specific one is only for right triangles, okay? Um, uh, it, and I'll, I'll kind of give you a, uh, an idea how this kind of works uh, with a, a rule that I said you couldn't have, but now because it's a specific kind of triangle, now I can use it, okay? So if you want to hit pause and write down, um, why don't you write down the, the the box, the definition of the box, and then let's just get a head start and let's go here because these notes are pretty simple or pretty short. And why don't you go ahead and draw the figure that goes with it. So hit pause, get all that done, and then let's get ready to go on this one and we'll get done. This is also a proof, so you want to go ahead and draw a two-column proof. So the box um, talks about having this theorem saying if you have the hypotenuse of a right triangle being congruent to the hypotenuse of another right triangle and corresponding leg, then the triangles are going to be congruent. Okay. Now remember, if a hypotenuse is, a, is the longest leg of a right triangle, it's always opposite from the right angle. The legs are the other two sides, whichever they might be. Okay, so you have to remember kind of what that is. It's been a long time since we talked about right triangles, all right? Now, once again, uh, they've given us some stuff as given, so let's go ahead and mark it. AC, so this vertical line is perpendicular to the base, so that's going to be right. And let's just, you know, make sure we say that too. And then AB is going to be congruent to AD. Okay, that was what was given to you. Now, I hope you understand, looking at your picture from your drawings that you've included, that these, that's the right angle and opposite is going to be the hypotenuse. So by this picture right now, the hypotenuses are congruent. So I've got half of what I need in, in, the, in the theorem hypotenuse leg, which is the fifth triangle congruency. So I need to find... Uh, another leg from each triangle that are going to be congruent. Okay, now I hope you understand you got this one big triangle, but then this AC that we said was perpendicular also is now cutting that big triangle into two smaller triangles. And I haven't used this for a while, but is AC part of both triangles? And it is. So remember, AC is going to be congruent to itself, so that's the reflexive property. show that it's congruent and guys ladies if if the sides are con if the if the sides are congruent in this case they're called legs because it's a right triangle are is the hypo are the hypotenuses congruent yes they are do you have legs that are corresponding from both triangles that are congruent yes I do so now I can prove that the triangle ABC is going to be congruent to triangle ADC, and that's going to be by HL. So once again, last step, 
is going to be one of the triangle congruencies. This one was, was kind of specific. A couple of you guys might be noticing too, do this in red. I've got an angle and an angle, sides that are equal, another sides that are equal. So that gives me ASS. And if you remember back a couple of uh, sections ago, I said you couldn't have ASS unless, you know, it was the teacher of the class. You couldn't have that. Well, ASS really is HL, but that's only because it's a right triangle, okay? And we don't like bad words in math anyway, so we changed it to HL, okay? Are we good? All right. Um, down here at this example number two, if you can go ahead and draw that and label it, please. And, you know, this is this is a, a type of question that we've started a few years back where you, you're trying to, you're given a situation, you said, hey, this person's right, or this person says they're correct, or vice versa, hey, this person looks like they did it wrong, what did they do wrong? So this, the student is saying that there's not enough information to determine if the two triangles are congruent, okay? Now, the, the tip for me, or where I'm going to kind of go after, is that I see right angles. And obviously, we just learned HL. So I'm going to see if I can or cannot prove it by HL. Okay? So looking at the right angle, well, there's the hypotenuse. Here's the right angle. There's the hypotenuse. So at least the hypotenuses are congruent. He might be kind of correct, or she might be kind of correct. What else do I know? Well. It looks to me like I got a parallelogram. It looks to me like I've got a diagonal that draws straight through it. And it looks to me like that um, diagonal is part of both triangles. So it's reflexive. So it's got to be equal. He said there's not enough. Usually it's the guys that say it's not enough information. They're usually wrong. So one of the girls in a class says, hey, you know, that is HL because I got hypotenuse. Hypotenuses are, are congruent and the same corresponding legs congruent. So yes, it is true by HL. So there was enough information for me to determine that it was. Okay. All right. So um, on this one, if you could draw these two and label them up. Okay, so this is what happens. Everyone does the assumption thing. They, they look like right angles. I mean, these angle T and angle Q look like the right angles, but do you know that they are? Is there anything I can use to prove it? Any information I have? And, and I don't. And, the, and this looks like the hypotenuse because it's across from what looks like a right angle. But since I don't know if they're right or not, you know, one could be 89, one could be 91. They look pretty close, but that doesn't, then the size aren't going to be the same. So, and, and this is a leg here, and this is a leg here that's congruent. It, it has all the makings for an HL, but uh, there's assumptions I have to make, and I can't do that. So, no, there's not enough information for that one, okay? And that's because there's no right angle. Okay, if you go ahead and draw this one, please, and label that up. And if you go ahead and, and look here, you know, I've got right angle here, and that would be the hypotenuse. So you got a right angle here, that would be the hypotenuse. So therefore, RV is equal to RV, and they're both hypotenuses, so they're congruent. And then I get this side is congruent to this side, which would be a leg of the triangle. So I could say that triangle RXV is congruent to triangle R. T B by H L. Okay, I had enough information to make some determinations that I could prove. Okay. All right. So um, pretty pretty straightforward stuff right there. Um, 
want to just make sure you get into your notes, make sure you have five uh, triangle congruencies now. This is number five, and you have the other four. Just this is really important to get this stuff down. And when you're doing your proof, tell me what you know, what you can prove. You can't say, I think it looks like it's 90. I think it looks like they're congruent. You've got to have a way to prove it, okay? All right. Make sure you get your work done. Make sure you get a hold of me if you need any extra help.